This is Gulf Country. Boys, this is where it begins. An untouched wilderness filled with adventure. You're not going to cross over that, surely. And danger. That's just bog city. You do go down this sort of stuff, you can literally lose a car in this. We're here on the mission of a lifetime. No car has ever been where we're trying to get to. It's completely untouched wilderness. We don't know if we're going to make it or not. We're about as remote as anyone could be right now. And this time, we might just have bitten off more than we can chew. Hey boys, I'm gone. Well, here we go. 5.16 in the AM, 3,224 kilometres to go. Day one, Morella Springs, the top end. Let's get out of this rainy weather and get stuck into it. Half the challenge of any four-wheel drive adventure is just getting to the start of the tracks. And ahead of us lies thousands of k's of challenging outback roads, country pubs and roadside camping. As we journey across the country from Brisbane to the most remote paradise that is Lorella Springs in the far reaches of the Gulf of Carpentaria. Just a day into the drive, central Queensland gets absolutely pummeled by unseasonable rain, overflowing highways and causing closures and delays across the north. For us, a three-day drive turns into a week-long epic. And more importantly, that rain signals that conditions at our destination might be a whole lot more hectic than we bargained for. At last, we make it across the border and into the Northern Territory. And the Gulf is in our sights. Well, seven days of driving, but we're finally here. A million acres of four-wheel drive paradise, one of my favourite places on earth, Lorella Springs. We've got the whole place to ourselves to explore, but we have got a bit of a mission in mind. You see, there's some creeks right out on the western side of the Gulf. We're going to try and get out there, try and get the boat in, try and get a couple of barramundi. No one's been out there for a very long time. In fact, one of the places we're going to try and get to, no one's ever driven out there before. So, fingers crossed we can make it. Lorella Springs is a rare jewel, even in Australia a virtually untouched wilderness park offering over 4,000 square kilometres of four-wheel drive only adventure and some of the most remote fishing and camping opportunities in the top end. After a dusty week on the road, we're grateful to pull into Lorella's homestead for a feed and a beer and to roll out the canvas and make ready for the start of our mission to the coast. Enjoy the peace while you can though, boys, because I've got a feeling things are going to get pretty wild from here on in. Sure do, mate. I think if you if you listen closely and just uh, you know wind your window down, you can almost you can almost hear the barramundi, mate. Mate, I love this place. Every time I come here, it just signals adventure, and something is bound to happen on a pretty grand scale, mate. What we've actually got planned for this one is we found on Google Earth a little creek that probably no football drive's ever been to before. If we can get up to there, there could be some of the best untapped fishing you've ever seen in your life. But to get there, we're going to have to drive across salt flats and a heap of treacherous sort of stuff. This could be one of the most epic adventures we've ever done. Pretty bloody excited. Joining us for the trip is Tim from Mitz Alloy in his beast of a 79, with the dog box swapped out for a full-sized touring canopy. This trip also marks the maiden voyage for another weapon of a rig, that's right, Ruben from DMW Industries has brought along an insane Y62 project, chopped and extended on 37s with a boat in tow to help us get further off the grid. Early season, these tracks haven't been driven that much, so you get these washouts like this, you just gotta kinda get up into them and give it a bit of bungee and hope for the best. Like that there. Bit of a wheel lift too. <laughs> That's fun. Feels heavy today, boys. So much water on board, so much fuel for this trip. 
The Lorella crew maintain a huge network of tracks across the park, but where we're going, we're going to be heading right off the beaten track, with the park owner Rhett giving us special permission to try and push a track to a far-flung corner of the property. Pretty soon we're nearing the end of the road, and the creek system we're aiming for is still a heck of a long way off, hidden behind kilometres of salt flats and tidal plains just like this. Once we leave the track, we're going to be guiding ourselves entirely off sat maps and gut feel. And that means adventure of the best kind. Boys, this is where it begins. Oh yeah, you're not wrong mate. Tire tracks are ending just about here. I don't know how. Where do we go from here mate? Up ahead is the start of a tidal system that we're going to need to cross at some point to get towards the secret spot we're chasing. You're not going to cross over that surely. That's just bog city. Should check those tides, see what they're doing too, so it ain't get caught out. Interesting, let's go have a look. Like I said, from here on, we're really going by feel, but we need to stick to the salt pans as much as possible, and there's a line to follow up ahead. The crossing is looking a bit sketchy, but we're gonna give it a go. We're taking no chances here and lowering our tire pressures right down, treating this as if you would any mud situation and dropping down to around 18 PSI. Right, we've got our first sort of major salt pan crossing here. This is the bottom end of the system we're trying to get around. Now, it really is all dependent on tides through here. We've got neap tides at the moment, which means they're very low tides. If this was a high tide, I'd be in water right now. There's no way you get across. So we've got half a chance, but still we walked across there and she's pretty darn soft. So being first means that I really am the guinea pig when it comes to these crossings, but a uh, lightest vehicle in the convoy, no doubt. Probably the best one to send through first. Good recovery points front and rear with those TJM bars. So I'm gonna gun it, see how we go. Wish me luck. As, beached as boys. That, that's just bottomless. You're not going to cross there, I don't think. Bugger, bugger. Hopefully, I'll be able to winch you straight back out. Yeah, I came to a screeching halt. Everything just flew forward in the vehicle. <laughs> now, look, hindsight is a wonderful thing, but we've hugely misjudged just how soft that mud was going to be. And now, I'm bogged to the chassis. Wow, you just went straight down, eh? Hey? Don't know about going you, back. You're so close. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking maybe. There's nothing to go forward off though. The problem with winching forward is simply the distance between the D-Max and the tree line. But the route we want is forward, so that's gonna be our first option. Paradise is that way. So we're gonna try and winch ourselves forward. We've got a heap of extension straps. We've even got spare winch ropes here. So we're gonna run up to this little tree up here, zip up out of here, then I'll be the anchor for everyone else. Fingers crossed, let's give it a go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh good, you can you can run the winch ropes. <laughs> to make it to the tree line, we're going to need to attach multiple extension straps together. But with plenty of soft shackles on hand, joining them up is not going to be an issue. With the winch angle being low though, we're going to need to clear some of the mud away from the front bar. So I needed a, per a personal shovel, you all sort of know what I'm talking about for this trip, and it does that job admirably. However, when it comes to digging mud, it's a slow game. Right, that should about do it. Now we've put two extension straps as well as almost a full winch rope. So that's the closest tree. If you're right in the middle of the salt pan, <laughs> there's no chance you'd be, you'd be doing any winching forward. But we just want to give this a go because if he makes it forward, at least we've got an anchor vehicle out this way. Far out, it's going to be a big winch either way. To help things along, we're also chucking in a couple of max tracks under the front tires to see if we can break that suction. Even with these steps, the hold of that mud is just too much. Doesn't feel like I'm moving at all. Far out, that's, that's stuck. Yeah, it's one of those boggings. From sitting in here, I just, feels like I'm in a cement block. That's a really big winch. We put so much strain there, I was a bit scared that the winch right might have snapped. So we're gonna give this idea up and try and pull him back through his own tracks and uh, rethink this whole crossing, because he's so stuck. That's unbelievable. We'll pull him backwards, hopefully you get another route and he'll go through, make it easier for the rest of us, because it's not giving us heaps of confidence at this stage. Backwards was not what we wanted, but for now, it's looking like the only option. 
but that's going to mean tracking back through a lot of mud, and I've got a feeling this could become an epic recovery. Have a go at this. <laughs> no wonder the poor D-Max is struggling, I can tell you. We know that the D-Max is dragging a huge amount of mud with it, so Ruben is hooking up the DMW rig to the back of the 30 to increase our anchor weight. Mr. KL, you ready? Mate, I'm in reverse and I've taken all the anchors off. <laughs> We're good to go. Thankfully, this time, the D-Max is starting to move. Yeah, she's working, mate. It's working. Starting to get a bit worried then. This is the stuff you don't want to be mucking around with. We've all seen horror stories of vehicles trapped on tidal flats before, and this is not somewhere you want to be stuck for too long. Yeah, he's definitely getting closer to me, which is a good sign. It's not often two blokes will say that, mate. See what I'm doing here is not driving crazy, and I'm letting that winch really build up and then using that power in the winch. Slow work, but if I was just to floor it now and just give it all the accelerator, I'd just sink in. The D-Max might be moving backward, but it's not lifting itself out of the mud. And that, well, that's going to be an issue. You're bringing a lot of mud with you. Those city folk could pay a lot of money to put that on their faces, mate, I hear. Oh, it's like concrete, that stuff. It looks like I'm pulling you back down again, man. We might get that shovel out and put some logs on the back here. You can see here the rear bar and all the boxes and everything are filling up with mud now too. I reckon he's, he's still going down. He's got probably another five or six metres before he's going to start to pop back up. But we'll get there. Breaking the suction of the mud is always the biggest challenge in these situations. And the mud wall behind just gets bigger the further you drag through it. And just look at that rear bar. We're a long way from out on this one. It's just bottomless, this stuff. And it's just this, like, once you break this surface, it's absolute... It looks like concrete, this stuff, just wild. So we're gonna get another winch, Tim's gonna come through, and we're gonna use another winch. Hopefully we can break that suction. As soon as he pops up, he'll be right, but he's just pulling through this at the moment, which is hard work. Let's see how we go with two runvers on the job. And look at that, we've finally got some real progress. You moving, looks like you're moving. Heaps more, heaps more than I was. That's an impressive thing. That's awesome. Crazy how much force is in that mud. It just, you can't fathom it until you've been stuck in it. Two winches and I'm just moving. It's a fair old pull, bud. Couple of workhorses in the team, mate. Just get the job done. Slam barrel one minute, heroes are next. Oh, I can see in your rear view mission is a couple of flogs sitting in cars using winches. Is that what is that what you're talking about? Oh, you break it up, big fella. You break it up. You ready for another go? Hey, Graham, what about the Nissan that's uh, holding both Toyotas back? That sounds about right. Nissan's always holding Toyotas back from greatness. <laughs> I've moved almost 10 metres from where I initially went down, but the mud just won't let up, and now the front is going down hard. I mentioned before just how treacherous this stuff is, and you can see right here how quickly you can come undone. It's out with the shovels again and the max tracks. If this doesn't work, we are out of options. Here it comes. I can feel it. Here it comes. Yeah, I can yeah. feel it. Good. Good. And it's done. Woo! Easy up. Easy up. Well done, boys. Oh, I can actually step out of my car. You're up. <laughs> Good job, baby. Hey. Woo! Yeah. Well, I think it's safe to say <laughs> that this route is not a goer. We're going to have to find a different spot to cross, and now that we know exactly the kind of mud we're dealing with, we're going to be taking things very, very carefully. We have a bit of a power wheel growing while yep. you're in the car, mate. New rule, What's let's your never rule? do this again. That's a great rule. Because three it's hours ago, rule. that looked like a great spot to cross. Well, to me, it looked perfect. And I'll tell you what, now after you see how sloppy it is, I mean, yep. we've got rocks in our heads. Exactly. Imagine if we were an hour out of the tide, though. 
Oh, I hate you, to think about yeah, it. Yeah, you don't want to think about that. I hate so, to think about it. We need to really rethink what we're doing here. I reckon our best bet, mate, is to just, we've got to go on a bit of an adventure. And I think so. That way by sunset, I guarantee you. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Let's just no, never do this again. All right. Mate, I'm a bit scared I might be over my GVM with the added mud I've got. I oh, know, you got some big bits of mud flicking off the back. You know, to be quite frank, that was on the limits of recoveries so that we tried pretty hard then. Two winches and only just got out. So what we'll try and do, mate, is just skirt along the edge of these green patches and not try and cross over. But if we have to, just pick really high, dry ground. We've only got to cross over a couple of times. The key is to spend the time, get the right spot to cross, eh? 100%, mate, 100%. We'll just poke along. After a better review of our sat maps, we've found an option to cross much further upstream. It's going to take us through a lot of tight scrub, but we should be able to meet up with our original crossing from the other side. What we're doing is we're following these fingers of rivers. During the high tide, there's no way you could do this because this would all be flooded through here, but these low tides, these neeps, you can just get up in here. So cool. This is so cool. The fingers of salt flats we're following don't always connect to each other, but we're looking for the shortest possible sections of bush to link them up. Graham's becoming the bulldozer of the convoy. Problem with this stuff is it's like, this is really, really hard wood, so it, you get stakes in your tyres, so easy doing this stuff, but Graham's just going through meticulously through here, trying not to get a tyre on a stake, and he's actually steered it really well. We're not all through yet though. <laughs> this is pretty thick, hard terrain. You get it wrong, there goes your tyres. After a bit of bush bashing through the scrub, we've made it to the next salt pan, and the aim is just to hug the sides as much as possible. But from what we've seen so far, it only takes a small slip up to end up bogged to the eyeballs. Just trying to sneak our way up through this system here, but we've got to stay on this side of the system. We don't want to be on that side. There's two ways to come through. This was the quicker. There's another way through there that was longer, and I thought if I could just sneak up on the bank through here, I might be able to save us 10 minutes. It's just cost us an hour. <laughs> We'll get winched backwards, we'll be good. Hopefully she just pops out and goes, let's just try it, Sean, I'll see what happens. Yeah, straighten those tyres up, I reckon. Yep. I've been extremely lucky here and only just broken the surface. But you can see how after even just one set of tyres passes over, the water can seep up and turn hard mud to slop. It's time to backtrack and look for the harder ground, I reckon. We found a better route to continue to the next waypoint we've marked on our map. The ground feels so sketchy though, and we're all on tenter hooks as we skip over the salt pans. This is pretty amazing. We're at a defining moment of the trip because the river started to become very salty, it's quite deep now. Chances are there's barramundi all through here, which is great. However, it also means that the river's a lot harder to cross. So we found a way up through here, we're gonna follow this a long way, but there'll, become, there'll come a stage where we actually have to cross this to continue to try and find the waterway we're looking for. But we'll cross that when we get to it. For now, let's just try and get all the vehicles up a little bit further. Let's even get to that time of day where we might need to find a camp, not so close maybe to the water. I think there might be a few snapping handbags in here. Yep. All right, we'll send Graham through first, I reckon. G'day, folks. Hope you're enjoying the adventure. It is giveaway time. We've got two sets of four litres of Raptor coating plus the aerosol of your choice. To win, all you got to do in the comments down below is let us know what you're working on in the shed at the moment and how you would use the Raptor. The D-Max and I are leading the charge through the salt flats and you got to give it to the old girl. This is a modern four-wheel drive with just a two-inch lift and bigger tyres. And I'm using it to forge a track for all the big rigs behind me. Up there, that's a big base camp there. 
on that. Thick. All that is like big muddy. We're just using the drone at the moment to try and find the best way through this thick stuff. We've got Shuey sitting next to me, he's one of our cameramen, and he's kind of giving me lefts and rights as best he can. I can see where we potentially want to camp tonight. 20 metres that way, but between us and that, thick scrub, and you can't read the terrain. One minute it's flat, next minute Shuey's saying don't go off the edge. If you think it's hard taking a full drive through here, try doing it with a boat in tow. Reuben's doing a great job. There are some limits though, and Tim has to offer a helping hand by cutting a few trees down to make a better path. Soon we've made it to the next bit of salt, and as is often the case on trips like this, it's not long till some of us have got a bit distracted. One thing I've learnt on these trips is you've got to be quick on the trigger to get your fishing rod out. The boys are already into it. We've been here 30 seconds. The camera car hasn't even got through yet, so better get at it. The camera boys are at the back trying to keep their Schmick new GU nice and tidy, but running last can come with some risks. Oh, big bog. And just like that, <laughs> they've gone down hard. Oh, bugger. Bugger. Hmm. Are we getting out backwards? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's just going to be a potato digger the whole way. Yeah. There's a bit of a shame this one because the camera car's down. What makes this annoying is not the fact that obviously we're on a salt pan and the recovery's going to be pretty full on, but it's getting to that time of the day where I wouldn't mind a cold beer and a bit of a fish. And uh, our afternoon is just taking a bit of a turn. Not barrel fishing, we're recovering nissens. In this case, we lucked into having Tim parked off to the side of the track. And the big mitts 79 should be able to winch the boys out backwards. <laughs> That's the theory anyway. I think Shauno's going over to grab his car and either anchor mine or maybe we'll double pull the back of the camera car out. Because uh, I just keep sliding and I'll probably end up well, myself if I'm not too careful. The double anchor seems to be the go and slowly but surely the camera car is coming free. I reckon we can say that the new camera car is now officially in full-wheel drive 24-7 service. Definitely coming up. Yeah, definitely. Here it comes. Wow. Well done. That's insane. Every time we go down, it's been a proper recovery. Yeah, I reckon we should be looking at the next salt flat for camping. This one <laughs> looks a bit used. Have a go at this. You, you break through this crust, which is nothing more than an inch or so of topsoil, sort of like a salty sand. Once you break through that, you can go down. That's half a metre deep there. It's just phenomenal. And then when you're in there, the suction that this mud has. I think this has taught us today that we've got to be a little bit careful moving on from here because as we move on, we're going away from the drier start of the system into the sort of wetter end of the system, if that makes sense. And so we're going to come across this a heck of a lot more. Up ahead is the pin we've been aiming for all day. It's a likely looking crossing spot that Rhett shared with us back at the homestead. And better yet, it looks like it'll make for a perfect campsite. And that's the best thing about exploring off the beaten track. We could literally be the first people to have ever camped here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty special. Now, this might not be the fishing spot we're aiming for, but it's a pretty idyllic place to park up for the night. And it gives us a chance to keep an eye on those tides before we commit to the crossing. And that, if anything is code for, go for a fish. Well, we've got to this place where we're gonna cross, but we're gonna to cross tomorrow by the looks. And uh, we've got our first little tasty morsel for dinner. I know it's not the, you know, the big barramundi yet, but I'm pretty happy with this little muddy. He'll, uh, he'll go for a nice little entree, I reckon. Like all good anglers though, it's important to have an excuse lined up when required. We're just a little bit too far west at the moment. It'd be good to make our way a little bit further out where the water gets a bit deeper. It's only about a foot deep through here. There are fish in here, but I think I think we need to keep going, mate. This was not a bad day one, if you ask me. No, nah, not at all. <laughs> yeah. 
97. Super hot day today, running the freezer and the upright fridge, so hot to trot. Holy heck, we are about as remote as anyone could be right now and have a look at it. <laughs> it's just absolutely stunning. Big day, the boys are knackered. We've got a beautiful camp behind us. I say it all the time, but it really is about as good as it gets. Speaking of which, have a look over my shoulder. The big Y62. Let's have a close look at this bad boy because if you haven't guessed, very close to my heart. Reuben, you mad dog. Catching mud crabs with your bare hands. Yeah, mate. Yeah. <laughs> been a big day. Oh, it has been. Absolutely pushing tracks into here has been unbelievable. You know what's bigger though, and I think you'll agree with me right now, how much this vehicle means to both you and I. Oh, this, this car is just absolutely epic, and it's been a dream come true. For you and for me. <laughs> yes. Because right now, <laughs> we are the only two people in, a str in the world yes. that own a chopped Y62 with a federally approved Four and a half ton GVM. Exactly, exactly. Which is freaking amazing, man. And you know what? People should get on the bandwagon and get their wagons done as well. And up to four and a half ton. Four ton for the wagons as well is the base entry and mm. then the big dog four and a half. And means you can pack it with every single thing you can think of. And look, they make an unbelievable tourer. Yes, it's a big V8 petrol, but I haven't used any more fuel than anyone else here today. No, no, exactly right. I think we just go over that point again, because it's important. If you own a Series 4 or a Series 3, yep. you can still have the very same GVM upgrades yep. done. Every single Y62 on the market can get our GVM upgrades. <laughs> it's freaking amazing, bro. Yeah. Oh, and they're also, and you know what it also does? It makes 35 inch tires 100% legal because that's the baseline start for your tire is a 35 inch. So that means that you can legally go to a 37. Absolutely, because you're allowed to go two inches bigger. I love being two inches bigger. I'd love, I'd love to be two inches bigger, mate. Yes, me mate, too, mate. This thing is a tribute to you. It's a tribute to DMW. The whole it, it's just it blows my mind. I love it to pieces. Ah, cheers, cheers, mate. mate. There's nothing quite like a Gulf Country sunset with a roaring fire and a few beers, and the scorching heat gives way to the cool of the evening. Get a load of this place. What a magical place to park up. I'll tell you what, today, we've made it this far. Well, we're within spitting distance. Like if you got a big lurgy and spat it, you'd almost <laughs> hit the coast, mate. She is just over there. It's not that far, but what concerns me a little bit, we've got to get through this crossing and whatever else lays past it. If we could get another, even like three or four Ks, yep. we are Battle in some of the best fishing country in Australia, full stop. It's the stuff it, dreams are made of. It really is, it really is. We've got a, we've got a Barra Virgin here miss as well, so. Yes, and, um, sitting over there. Look, he's even holding his rod ready. Yeah, he's ready. <laughs> Just in case one comes in, a, comes walking into camp, he can cast at it. This camp is pretty special. It is. The only thing that can make it just a fraction better. Yeah. Is if I put the old chefery hat on oh, and, uh, okay. <laughs> I gave a few utensils a ruffle up and uh, get a dinner sorted. So. You are not a chef! <laughs> I am a chef! You just hold on to your beers, boys. Maybe even get another one. Yeah, yeah. we're going to need it. We're going to need it. <laughs> well, I'm going to get into it. It's going to be all time tonight. Oh, mate, look at this. Well, how good is this? Now, we have had a hard slog to get this far in this trip and to get so close to the river right now, there could be barra money sitting right down there, and it's just so exciting. You, you do these trips for that reason. Hey, mate, how you going? Very good, very good. I'm just about to start cooking up. Now, you've seen this one before. Mate, this thing is the bee's knees. Oh, this is, I've got a new cooker, guys, so I want to share this with you. This one here is the Genesis Base Camp. Now, if you're familiar with the Jet Boil products. Which we all use for coffees in the morning. Yeah, this one here is at a whole nother level, though. So we're cooking up a bit of a feed tonight, and I can't wait to show this one, because it's going to be, well, I think, quite a good thing. You got a bit of a plan? Yeah. We'll undo those couple of clips, and just like a big clamshell. Look at that! I know. And it's two cookers in one that packs up so nice. So what I like about that is, you know, I've, I've got a very, oh, I'd say, I'd, it's quite a small setup yeah, in the back. The back. The back is quite small, yeah. Like you and I, though, it packs egg of a punch. Well, exactly right. So 
Let me just chuck these ones straight. Gonna, there you go. Straight Beautiful. onto that. Now yeah, that's our that. little cooker. What I like about this is it obviously packs down really small, but it's got two burners, it's got everything I need. It's got a pot and a little saucepan as well. So yeah, for now. I'm going to sit this one on here. We are now, ready to cook. Now, tonight, oh. tonight. I know, I know, I'm all ready. This is absolutely no, amazing. There's something we, you don't, you're not seeing here. What, what do you mean? This is a, this is exciting. It is exciting because I, I, I have control of the flame and the, everything on this side. It's all on my hang side. On, that should be, we should turn this around to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, no, this is chefry tonight. I get to have a plate. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Well, I'm going to cut these <laughs> onions up because you don't like doing that. No, I don't. Make um, it dry. Inside the Mike Coleman, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got one there. I've obviously got another one here as well. Mr. In there, you're going to see some venison. It's, Oh, it's, it's the red meat, mate. You won't know what venison is, probably. Ah, really? It's um, it's actually red deer. Where'd you okay. get that from in the Gold Coast? Like red? Is that so? It's a red deer. That's a red deer, mate. That's um, okay. personally harvested. Did he's all nervous? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm 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 with one of the the greater hunters you'll see in the modern era. This is Graham Cahill, hunter extraordinaire. Um, unfortunately, I, I asked him to. You could just supply a little bit of venison, so it didn't work out. I had to go and get some myself. It's true. I, I it's, it's a hundred percent true. He's, uh, he, he did really well. If you haven't tried venison before, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different style of meat. It's quite gamey. If you like gamey meat like I do, if it's cooked right, venison will be one of the better meats you'll ever eat. And what are we doing with it? More to the point. Yeah, I've, I've done this before on the show. I've made a bit of a meat log before. I'm going to make a well, so you can go in the middle there. Yeah, look, I'm just going to just get in there and just do a little bit of. It. Okay. <gasps> That's not a good egg. <laughs> what was that egg? <laughs> oh, that's on my fingers. <laughs> this one is going to be way better than any other meat log I've ever tried before. There's actually some cream cheese in there. Copy that. I'll cream just cheese. There you go. I'll just cut those up. Yep. You wouldn't mind getting that on the on the spark. 100%. Here we go. What I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to transfer the onion into the pan. Transfer the onion into the pan. That's how we say that in the chefery oh, school. Yeah. Do you want some uh, oil in there? Or are you going to do it? Yeah, a little bit, a little, yeah, little bit of oil. You don't want to go in dry. Well, these are non-thick pans as well. You hardly need much. If you can get a bit, few mushrooms in there as well, mate, on the on the on the boil. Got some mushrooms right there. This is a nice little piece of. This is backstrap. So it's a very. Explain to the viewers what a backstrap is, my friend. A backstrap is a we very a very with. tender, tender cut of meat. You can cut it into steaks, you can do all sorts of so stuff with this. There's with so it, yeah. much you can do with it. But what I'm gonna to do tonight is I'm actually gonna butterfly this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and use my fillet skills. <laughs> That's fillet in other words, but yeah. we'll go with fillet. <laughs> Just to try and cut that open because we're gonna basically pack the inside of the venison with a heap of yummies. Wowzers. We're gonna wrap it, we're gonna do some really cool stuff mm. and it's gonna taste really, really How many good. people on this river system do you think have eaten red deer? Uh, Filet mignon type style. Probably not a heap. Wouldn't I'd be say. too many, I wouldn't think. What does that look like, Graham? Oh, to me. Yeah. Oh, it looks like a really well filleted piece of backstrap. I was thinking that because it's but getting. I'll tell you what, if we stay out in the bush too much longer. <laughs> you know what I like about this gadget? Infinite heat settings. I can. You can. You can really choose your heat setting on this bad boy. There you go. That sort of that sort of splayed oh, yeah, open. In the middle there. Yeah, yeah. Right, so a little bit of cream cheese. Yeah, this is the light cream cheese, mate. I'm just uh, thinking of everyone in the convoy. <laughs> Jump on the bus, we're heading to Gainstown. <laughs> so what's the plan? Are you gonna spread that across the... Uh... The entirety of the middle section of the backstrap. Yeah, right. So butterfly the backstrap out. Now you can do this with most meats, yeah, to hey, be honest. Let's, let's go there, what could you do this with? Oh, any 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 meat you can get like this, like a, a big flank steak yeah, or something yeah. like that. This this will actually melt down when we start cooking, so there's no mm. need to make it look too pretty at this stage. Because you're not. It's really not. It's not as. <laughs> you know what? It was going to look better in my mind. I'm going to give you that, chef. That's going straight in, mate. Just just spoon her in straight in the okay, middle. Okay, I get that job, do I? Right. In in the Mike Holman, I actually have some bacon, believe it or not. Ah, look out. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to try and roll that straight in, like Is so. that under your 16 bars of chocolate? There's some health snacks in there There's you need to get past. <laughs> this bloke. Get through. This bloke. <laughs> We're just going to go just some salt across the top of that, like that. A little bit of paprika. Ooh. Garlic salt and uh, parsley. 
parsley. Obviously, ah, that's the stuff that gets stuck in your teeth when you go to a job interview. Yeah, this is going to be all careful. Your guts are coming out. Oh no, you got to be careful here. You're basically, going to get. Yeah, go. I'm going to make a. You do you. A little uh, carpet of bacon of goodness here. Oh, that's a slippery looking meatloaf. That is. It really is. Now I've actually taken the liberty. I should have. I really should have got some skewers, maybe skewers from the supermarket. Might have been a bit more. But we're so far from the supermarket right now. It's going it's to be. It's going to be tricky. Let me hold your meat for you. If I could. Do you yeah. need more? Oh no, more, I see more what you're bacon. Doing. No, more, no, no, more no, no, bacon. No, no, no. That's exactly what we need to do. Put a piece of old dried mango wood like that. That's it. Straight through. Now you cool. can do this two different ways. I'm planning to do it on here. I'm going to sear it because what you want to do is you want to make sure that the venison is still extremely rare. 100%. When you cook it up. Yep. So, like I said before, honestly, if you had some proper skewers, skewers. maybe, you keep it together really tight. But you know what? That's Whacker what, in that, there, mate. That's working. Whacker in there. Be gentle now. Yes. Just fits in beautifully. Yeah, that'll all tighten up as it gets hotter. It will do. And while that one's going on, I'm going to make a second little one because we can. We've got just enough. Somebody go and cut some sticks. Yeah, you might need to go get yeah. some sticks. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon, mate? How long's that been? Well, I reckon that is just about done because the, the whole key is medium rare if we can. You've got it with venison. You can't overcook it. Careful, that's going to be hot as ah. Hades. What we've got here is we've got the big one, the little one. We've put yep. them both in here. I'm going to take the little one out first. I love that we've used nature's sticks. Give it a carve. Well, this could be it. This, this is the old... Come on. This is the moment, mate. Give it a carve. This is the moment. Oh, oh! That is perfect. Perfect. You're looking for medium rare with venison, obviously. Look at that. That is actually perfect. Oh, you couldn't have done it any better if you tried. I just want to put that in my gob hole. Just tell people not to eat the sticks. Yeah. That's the key. <laughs> if it gets woody inside, you've gone too far. <laughs> Boys, get your plates, we're on. Mate, ah. what is the go with that? Oh, that looks Have absolutely a go epic. At that, boys. Venison medallions. Oh. 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 Mate, you've nailed it. Taste on that. That is oh. well, that's spectacular. Yep. It really is. You've nailed it, brother. Absolutely nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah, I already know. I'll probably call that venison meat log. Venison log, yeah. Venison mm. log. Oh. All right, let's go sit by the fire, boys. Mm. We might be coming oh, back God. for seconds pretty soon. <laughs> 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 I was going to say, you're up. <laughs> Doesn't take you much, does it? Right now at 4 247com I've got an awesome deal on where if you spend a certain amount, you'll get a free gift when you check out. What do I mean by that? Well, if you spend 100 bucks, you'll get a free DriveTech tire deflator. Spend 200 bucks and you'll get a drifter stock from Dunny Shovel or a drifter LED torch and fan. Spend 400 bucks and you'll get a Snatch Camo hoodie or spend 1000 bucks and you'll get a free DriveTech air compressor. So, if you've got some stuff you need to get for your full drive and you can get a little something extra for it as well. Make sure you jump on it quick and don't miss out on this awesome deal at 4 drive 247com Get yourself a free gift when you check out. If you thought a Gulf sunset was spectacular, then you should check out the Sunrises. Ahead of us stretches several kilometres of coastal sand flats and boggy ground. But if we can navigate our way through them, then a truly special river system is gonna be ours for the taking. Our first challenge lies right outside camp, and it's our best chance of getting the vehicles across the creek. It could be hard ground or it could be a bottomless bog. We just don't know, but that's a problem for after breakfast. I'm not really one that needs an alarm clock anywhere I go, and out here especially, you don't need an alarm clock. Before the sun was even near the horizon this morning, there was a dawn chorus of birds I don't think anyone could have slept through. It was incredible, but what a way to wake up. Check this place out. Absolutely stunning. For us though, our future lies that way. Before we head that way though, let's go this way. I want to show you something. The camera crew have finally stepped it up in life and grabbed themselves a new Mitz canopy. I was chatting with them yesterday and they are frothing on it. I mean, the vehicle itself, not a huge amount of difference. It still drives much the same, but the livability out of this, the boys reckon 
through the roof. Shui was saying, you don't have to pull everything out of the back to sort of grab your bog roll, it's got a place. I don't know where that place is, I'm not about to go jumping into here, but the boys have set their canopy up a little bit different to us, of course, they've got to work out of the back of theirs. And as you can see, <laughs> I don't even know where to start with all this stuff in here, but here's some things I like. The boys actually spent quite a bit of time with me, it's just designing it for their needs. So have a go at that. Two of these drawers slide out and they pop their big cameras in here. And I do believe they've got plans to get rid of the milk crates and, uh, and actually put a custom little box in there. And the reason they've done this, so there's a lot of thought that's gone on behind this, is that when we get into camp or anywhere where they need to take the cameras away from the car, they can just lift that out, take the cameras with them. It's got their batteries in there, everything they need. Big drawer here. All sorts of things in there, folks. I won't even start to pretend I know what that is. And then, of course, charging gear up here. They've got their laptops down here. Oh, there's a picture of me, really bogged. Inverters, batteries, the whole lot. But other side is livable. They've got their kitchen, they've got their fridge, all their bits and pieces over there. It has utterly transformed the way the boys camp. They are frothing. It's the first trip for the big car. And as you can tell, she's already been bogged down to the diffs as well. So the boys are loving it. And I, uh, I, I can't recommend it more highly. We've had a canopy, of course, on all our vehicles for quite some time. And I reckon it's the only way to go if you're serious about touring. As for now, I better not touch anything more. I'll get into trouble. With some brekkie on board, it's time to strike camp and get psyched up for the next crossing. But first, there's been a little Nissan mishap the boys need to come clean on. Well, yesterday, I noticed that Ruben was showing Graham around the Y62, but something struck me a little bit weird yesterday. Ruben wouldn't come to this side of the vehicle. I think I might have just a suspicion why. What's going on, mate? <laughs> There's no amount of polishing is going to fix that one. What, what? What's wrong with it? <laughs> <laughs> what did you get up to yesterday? Oh, mate, we we're pushing through that scrub and a really, really tight spot had to get around a really nasty stump and it had some stuff hanging out of it and I didn't really see it and I had to gas it to get it around and, and it just yes. got hooked up. And I gave, gave her a little bit too much bundy. He did, he did, mate. <laughs> well, I can see here as well. Like, I know you talk about the roll bar design in all your chops, but I can actually yeah. see the roll bar design working a treat because it's right yeah. down here. That's where it's obviously pushed here and it's hit that roll bar yep. and deflected off. And actually, your tray's not yeah. even too bad either. Yeah, it's just, it's caught that a bit, but yeah. Oh, look, I'm happy with the integrity of the roll bar and all that sort of stuff. Shame the Nissan stuff around it can't handle the DMW that's, work. That's the problem, mate. <laughs> Nissan panels, no match for out here, that's for sure. It's a bit of a shame. I'm, I'm glad you can laugh about it now. A little bit more chainsawing, I think, today. I think so. I think so. Good <laughs> idea. All right, I'll get packed up. Let's get squared away. Righto. Okay, here we go. The crossing. Here we go. Will we make it? We're going to hug the right-hand side of this one. But even so, it looks like there's two possible soft sections to get through. Now it's important to send your most capable driver first. <laughs> so once again, the D-Max and I are going to be the guinea pigs. Okay, my plan of attack here is just to take it nice and slow because that way if I do sink on this crossing, I'm not rushing into it and sinking myself really badly. I just sort of popping myself down so the boys can pull me out quite easily if anything does go pear-shaped. So we'll see how we go here. Across the water, up the other side. Loves that. Loves that. That's a beautiful thing, Mr. Graham. Nailed that. Easy. All right, should we do the main main ingredient? Part one was a piece of cake, but the next section looks a lot more treacherous. All right, second half of the equation. Graham doesn't want to repeat it yesterday, so again, he's going to go slow and steady. At first, this one seems easy as, but then he hits the exit. Ooh. Stop. Bugger. She's doing a Mr. Whippy. She's doing her in park or something. The key, the key is not to gun it when you get to there. No. Unlike yesterday, this time a good anchor point is within reach and the front is already up on hard ground. So hopefully this should be a bit of an easier winch. Come on, here it comes. It's digging a trench though. It's not out of the woods yet. Come on, up you come. Wow, got the big cheese wheel. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, time for the big 30 to give it a crack. And I've got a feeling Sean will be using a different strategy to me. Okay, looking forward to this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a red hot drive. Graham went for the slow and steady approach. I'm gonna go for second gear and feed it and <laughs> see, see how that goes. 
Now, this could be touch and go, or nah, smooth as a whistle. That's the key. I'd straddle his line now. I'm nervous. Holy moly, that is the ticket boys and girls. So this here is exactly why you don't want to be going over your mate's wheel tracks. That's just one very light vehicle. If we were to put a big rubes across there, what we'd see is his roof rack, I reckon. Godspeed, baby. We are one vehicle away from catching Barracuda Bundy. Here he goes. Oh. Beauty. Oh. Well done. You beauty. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, we're across. <laughs> right, to the next challenge. Which is about two minutes that way. <laughs> Doesn't stop this place, does it? With that crossing done, we're well and truly into no man's land. And right up ahead is some tight scrub that needs the chainsaw. Track clearing. Now the creek system we're aiming for in our maps is gonna require us to get closer to the coast before veering west for a few k's. The problem as always is finding some salt flat lines that'll take us in the right direction. But of course, the closer to the ocean we get, the less we can trust those open areas. And sure enough, just 100 metres ahead, we're in strife. Just like that, the D-Max has absolutely sunk like a stone through what looked to be hard ground. I didn't even move then. I did not even move the car. So that's what we're dealing with. The car did not even drive, it just sunk. So you have to gun it across that, I reckon. Mm. Get through. I'm happy to, uh, there's a hole in the trees there. I can go for a little recon walk. What, what just happened? What just happened? You were just in front of me. Yeah, I know. I, I, I blinked for two seconds and the D-Max is bogged. Disappeared. I think, um, no, I like having it up front, but what about? <laughs> Time for a change, reckon? Maybe just give somewhere else a go. All right, all right. No, I'm happy with that. <laughs> but whilst we decide that, you reckon you could uh, help out a mate? It's clear now that what Graham has hit is the line of a hidden watercourse. It cuts through this entire flat and it's going to wreak havoc if we try and push forward through it. A line through the bush is going to be the go, but first we're going to get Graham out of trouble. Okay, let's see what happens, mate. All right. Definitely moving, but I'm not having any upward movement. As has so often been the case on this trip, once you're in the mud, getting the vehicle back out is a mission, and the D-Max is just digging itself in. Wow, this place is just so wild. In theory, once Graham hits the edge of this watercourse, he should lift out. But after 10 metres, it's not looking good. Yep, this is uh, another one of them, them ones. She's pretty bogged. I don't know what to think, because we can keep pulling him, but he's just pulling the earth with him. It's a very big winch. I've I just thought about it, oh, just something that came through my head, boys. If we just leave him here, yep. we could go and get some barramundi at the coast there. Yeah. You could be like a base camp. Come back for him. We'll bring you oh, some in a food couple of days couple or days something. Days yeah. So, yeah. You got plenty yeah. of water, don't you? Leave me some water. <laughs> <laughs> well, going backwards is probably not an option. Uh, so we're going to try and winch forward, but on an angle out of this water course that you can see I'm in here. So there's a couple of big trees down here. If I can get out of those ruts, we might be in with a chance. What we're doing here is a double line pull because he's so stuck. He's gonna be winching on an angle as well. It's gonna put so much tension on this whole recovery. We'll try and not only make it safer, but actually give it half a chance of working while using a double line pull. It actually halves the load from the winch. So you essentially get double the pulling power. So uh, bring the tension up on that, mate. I've got to get in Jukes of Hazard style. Oh. Oh. The advantage of this angle is that one tyre is already up and out of the mud and we're pulling towards higher and firmer ground. Yeah. This strategy is working a treat. Slowly and surely, I'm coming unstuck. Here it is, here it is. Woo! -hoo! Yeah, you're out. Yeah, beautiful, mate. Just look at that. That is what lies in wait for us any time we make a wrong move. I tell you, these are pretty challenging driving conditions. Wowzers. 
We're going to have to take a radically different line here and try and find a way to continue through the scrub. Believe it or not, the river system we've got marked is only a few kilometres away as the crow flies, and from the drone, we can actually see it in the distance. But getting there means navigating through some wild terrain, and Tim is soon on a mission to find us a line through the bush to the next salt flat. All right, so that's where we want to get to. We're going to get across and try and hug that riverbank. With a promising looking spot lined up, We've just got to find the shortest route through the scrub towards it. The big fish we're going to get is going to make all this worth it, 100%. Just got to get there. Tim soon got a route sussed on the GPS and is engaging a dozer mode up front in the 79. And with conditions as tight as this, you'd almost think we were back on the Umbulgari track. The big dozer is back at work. Tim nailed the line though and finds his way straight to the next opening. With one vehicle through, following the line becomes reasonably easy. That is, unless you're about 12 metres long. Well, I'll tell you what, cutting this track, Tim did a marvellous job. We tried to make it as wide as we could, but towing the boat trailer through here, I'll tell you what is a main feat, trying not to get it snagged on any of the trees. Can't wait to get this boat in the water though, up where the fish have not been fished in a long, long time. We have to do something about this log, eh? It's getting dragged over the top of the boat. Oh, that's a big old man. Wild stuff. We just had to trim a tree and then we fell it. And the, as we were doing it, the wasps come out, so we didn't get to fall the right way. It landed half on the boat. There's a paper wasp nest like that big inside it. It's taken a bit of manoeuvring, but the big 62 is through and we're on to the next challenge. Sean's taking a turn up front for a bit and now he gets to be the crash test dummy on these treacherous flats. Stick to where the cattle have been walking. Maybe those guys know what's up. From the drone's perspective, we've seen a promising line to follow pushing west. Can you just run us a chainy up here, Timbo? But I've got a feeling this won't be the last time the chainsaw comes out. Although, folks, be careful who you let use your power tools. One job. I'll get onto that one, eh? What are you going to say for yourself, mate? Sorry, boys. Sorry about that. Yeah. Lucky for us, Tim and Reuben have learned by now to pack spares, and the way ahead is soon clear. Ahead of us lies a fair stretch of salt flats and scrub bashing, but slowly and surely we're making progress. Sort of get about 100 metres every time we need to get the chainsaw out. It's pretty good going, really. I'm just coming out of the scrub at the moment, it's starting to open up and theoretically there should be a river down here. Boys, well, I don't want to say it's too early, but I can almost hear the barra buffing up in front. I think we're getting almighty close to uh, this creek that potentially has not been fished before, so <laughs> pretty excited. That'll be the thing of dreams, mate. Bloody paradise. Cannot wait. Mate, I hope there's a bit of a spot where we can back this boat in. Yeah, we'll make room for that. I'll bring on the barra. Yeah, it's nice and dry so far. No, don't say that. No. Yeah, hopefully that's not famous last words. Right up in front are some huge salt pans that lead directly onto our river. We're so close to our destination now, but not quite out of the woods yet. Hey boys, I'm gone. 
Despite hugging the higher ground on the edge of the bush, it only takes a couple of tyre passes to break through that topsoil and Reuben has sunk right down. This could be an almighty recovery. We are so close, Reuben. I know. So close to greatness, but close. I have a feeling as we inch literally metres closer, you're going to get more and more terrain like this because it's this is floods. This floods ring a high tide. Well, you've had your fair share of this. I mean, it's about time the big girl went down. You did the right thing, though. You've stopped before she went down, so mm. I'm stoked with that. This will be a short winch up onto here. And then if we can just hug this edge all the way through, there's a campsite down here, and what I've done is there's, a, there's an old bathtub that washed up many years ago. Mm. I've just filled it up with ice and cold beers. Oh, <laughs> I've made sure the swimming hole's clean. Oh, that's so good. as soon as we're out of here, yep. I've done none of the above, boys. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be hot out there, but we'll be right. We'll be right. Let's get you out of here first, right mate. Right mate. Right on. A double line pull worked for us before, and so that's what we're going to do again. This is where you want to put your recovery blanket as well. Straight over the top of this. A little drive. That's what I hoped wouldn't happen. It's a familiar story here. The 62 is just digging itself sideways. But Ruben does have a couple of tyres up on hard ground, so he's in with half a chance. There she goes. A lot of, lot of force in there. There's a lot going on. I can see the rear wheel. Boat's gone down. Look at that. Look at the boat go down. Yeah. Boat's just sinking under its own weight. He's taking it through the same wheel track. The trailer is literally a land anchor right now and just dragging so much mud with it. Am I out? You're out. The boat's well in. The boat's in the same shit you were in. If you go like another meet out, that boat might be out. All right. All right, let's pull the front rounds that way somehow. Yeah. Winch out. We've learnt now that pulling from more of a sideways position can really aid in getting a stuck rig out as it pulls the vehicle onto ground that hasn't been churned up by its own tyres. And we're hoping the same principle will work for the boat trailer. Here she comes. Here it comes. And look at that, will you? That is a great sight to see. The trailer is up and out. Wow. A lot of force on that one. That was a big, that was a real big recovery. Crazy. This top end country it ain't for the faint hearted, put it that way. It's been an incredible journey so far to make it to the system we've been chasing, but our hard work is surely about to pay off. Oh boys, we must be getting super close now. What's your GPS say, Graham? Mate, you'd be almost within sight. We've just got to sort of push through this last little bit of bush and then down to your right a bit, mate. Yeah, Roger. It's hard to imagine there's a river anywhere close to where I am at the moment. I know, I know, right? But it's quite a big river, so fingers crossed we can get the boat in, mate. We might not be able to see much from the vehicles, but from the sky, it's clear that the river is right ahead and it's a doozy. An untouched little gem that rarely, if ever, gets fished. And we're going to have this place all to ourselves. I'm at the river, boys. I am at the river. yoo hoo, -hoo. Oh, you beauty. Oh, yeah, it's a river, boys. Oh, my God, to be. It's a proper river. Oh, tell me it's a proper river. We've done good. We've done good. Barracuda Monday! Woohoo! You know what I do when I get to places like this? I, I get a little three inch rig wire out, mate, and uh, dangling it all around. Yep, yeah, get your grubby worm out. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds, Sounds like, like a game. game. Now, this, folks, is an absolute fisherman's paradise, and that river could be teeming with life.
It's a privilege to four-wheel drive anywhere in this amazing country, but a mission like this makes it truly special. For now, though, we've got one thing on our minds. Well, we've made it to one of the most remote sections of river you could ever hope to see. Everyone's got a line in the water. I won't say it's competitive, but damn, it's competitive. <laughs> it doesn't take long for our first hookup. You gotta remember, of course, that we're still in the shallow reaches of the system. If we can get the boat in, we're gonna be able to head up to some much deeper water. But even off the bank, the rewards are starting to come in. Oh yes! My first one ever! <laughs> Reuben has officially popped his barra cherry with a decent sized fish. My first ever barra, gonna get the boat in tomorrow. So I just can't imagine what we're gonna catch. This has been an absolutely epic trip. It's been so hard to get here, I've been bogged. We've had to chop tracks in, but to catch fish like this for me is just absolutely the best thing ever. And it's an absolute pipe dream to actually be living it and doing it. There's nothing quite like fresh barra. And this one, well, this is about as fresh as they come. What we're doing is we've got no eskies or no ice out here, so the second we get these fish, bleed them, dispatch them pretty quick, and um, just rip the fillets off. Get them, get some of these Ziploc bags, and you put the fillets in there, just with the skin on, doesn't, doesn't bother me, and then they can go straight into the Michael Ullman, you get rid of all the head and all that sort of stuff that takes up a lot of room. And um, get a few of these, we want our, ourselves a few ingredients. This system we've discovered is nothing short of magical. And if we can navigate the boat down it, things are gonna get better. For now though, it's about time to crack a cold beer and set up camp for the night. But it turns out our boggings are not quite done for the day. I've just uh, went to move to try and make camp. I thought I'll just quickly park up and then I'll set camp up, but instead decided to get bogged to my chassis rail. So it's about time I got bogged. Didn't have to be right here though at camp, did it? There's one in every crowd. <laughs> Seems like it's never too late in the day to cook it, and Sean's done a doozy. We're becoming pretty good at this now though, and in no time the 30 is winching to safety. It's clear though that this section is pretty tidal, so we might want to move our camp just, uh, well, a little further back. That was actually, as far as boggings go, that that's a good one. Goes to show, but have a look at that. The big hole back there. <laughs> I reckon that's about enough excitement for one day, and it's well past time to roll out the canvas and make camp for the night. Once again, it's just another perfect Gulf Country spot. And tomorrow, we're going to be trying to make it out to this, a pristine waterway just begging for us to wet a line. The Gulf Coast changes daily on the tide, and we've been pretty lucky on this trip, with neat tides giving us access to areas that will soon be underwater again. And we're determined to make the most of this opportunity and get the boat we've dragged all this way into the river and up to the Gulf. This is pretty exciting. We've got the arsenal ready to go. Right, we've just got to figure out how to get the boat into the water, and um, the tide's quite low at the moment as well, so it's going to be very shallow to try and get to where we want to get to. but. This is part of it, just trying to suck it and see. We'll get the boat in first, that's the biggest hurdle. All right, you guys ready? Let's go. Now, of course, there's no boat ramp here and getting down to the water could present quite a challenge. The beautiful thing is though, if we do get the boat in, I'd almost guarantee that we're the first people to ever put a boat in this stretch of river right here, ever. 
So that's, in this day and age, it's pretty cool. Somehow though, our luck has held and this spot has made for an almost perfect boat ramp. That's actually way better than I thought. Boat is in the water. Well, I reckon that was significantly easier than I thought it was yeah, going to be. Yeah, way, yeah. Look at that, he's just driving back out again. That is officially the No Name River Boat Camp. No doubt about the big Y62 on the 37s. There we go. How good is that? That way's the ocean. It's been 10 days since we left Brisbane with this exact destination in mind. And at last, we're on the water. The neap tides might have helped us get out here, but also make for some shallow water channels. And getting the boat through isn't exactly easy. But there's no way we're giving up now. How epic is this? This is what it's all about. I mean, <laughs> this has got to be the first boat to ever come in the upper oh, reaches of this system, without, without, a a, without a doubt. We just don't know what to find around every single corner. You've got little obstacles like this. Our mission right now is to make it out to the coast. But unfortunately for you guys, this is we're going to leave you because we need all hands on deck right now. <laughs> I suppose to find out if we do make it to the coast. Still don't know. I've got no idea. I don't know. I'd love to because Ooh. I reckon <laughs> if we do make it to the coast, this will be the most epic thing. It really could be. It so really now, could be. I'm getting back on navigator duties. <laughs> I suggest you guys set your calendars because when this next one comes out, oh, I can't even talk. I'm so excited. <laughs> Things are heating up. They really are. Catch you next time. Next time on Four Wheel Drive 24-7. We push on to experience some of Australia's most remote fishing. I got another one! Yeah! We've still got 60 k's to go out to the coast through some pretty rough roads. Not to put any pressure on roofs down there, got to be a pretty darn good weld. We get trapped by rising tides. It looks like a proper river. This has changed everything. And explore the magic that is the rest of Lorella Springs. The landscapes out here have truly blown my mind. One of the greatest places I've ever been. It's got to be one of the single most incredible things I've ever seen. Absolutely spectacular. I've never seen anything like it. Don't miss the rest of our golf adventure coming soon to YouTube.